This video is gonna be about the, uh, the part cooling fan shroud and the sensor mount for the BL Touch uh, mesh bed leveling sensor. Um, the part cooling fan shroud is uh, pretty intricate and it works really well because it cools the part from two sides and still gives you uh, a nice clear uh, view of the actual nozzle while it's printing. Um, unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to cover how to get mesh bed leveling working on your printer in this video and if you want to know why, go ahead and watch this other video right here in the title card. Um, basically, I can't get the firmware to work. And I'm not alone. There's a lot of people that have the same problem. So I'm working on a solution. But in the meantime, uh, this fan cooling shroud will work on your AnyCubic console printer if it has this end effector. Now, they're selling uh, models that have a different end effector now, and this is not the fan shroud for you. Um, but if you have this end effector, the fan shroud will work and also the BL Touch mounting bracket will work. And you might ask why does that matter if you're not getting uh, the mesh bed leveling to work. The reason is that you can upgrade to a Duet or Smoothie board which are much easier to deal with in firmware and that mounting bracket for the BL Touch will work just fine uh, running a Duet or Smoothie board. So yeah, let's, uh, let's see how I, how I did all this. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is print the bracket that mounts the BL Touch onto the fan shroud. Uh, that'll be right here, that'll go right there. And we're currently in the middle of printing it, but there's a couple of problems that you're gonna run into with cooling, with part cooling. So this part cooling fan currently is at 84, so it's pretty low. So it's at about 25%, and you can see the temperature on my bed is dropping, 98. As soon as it gets to 97, we're gonna have a failed print here. What did I say? So, um, yeah, we need to fix that. Now what's going on there is the fan shroud is blowing directly on this tiny little part. So it's lingering right over that center spot on the board. And directly underneath that center spot is where the, um, the sensor is that reads the temperature on the bed. So the rest of the bed is doing just fine at 100 degrees, but right where the sensor is, is actually dropping in temperature. And then we, of course, run into the thermal runaway protection in the firmware. So. We're gonna to have to uh, do something about that. Okay, so an easy answer uh, to that problem of the, the bed being cooled too much and triggering the, uh, the auto shutdown is to print off-center. So the pencil currently here at the center of the board and we're printing off-center. But we're running into another problem with the, uh, the cooling uh, duct. You can see this corner right here is lifting as it prints and it's only getting worse. It stays soft, it stays molten, and it kind of curls up as the print head passes over it. And the reason that corner is doing it and not this corner, these are symmetrical after all, uh, but the reason this one's lifting and not the other one is because this one is in the, the windward shadow, or the leeward shadow of the, uh, of the nozzle. So it does not receive that, uh, that air because the air is only coming from the one side. So uh, that's a problem. Okay, so here we are getting into the spire portion of this print, and you can see it's just a very thin moment, and that's gonna go up to quite a bit of height, uh, maybe twice the height that it currently is, and then uh, it also has to do an overhang uh, at the top here. So I don't know if it's showing up on camera, but it's meant to be sort of a, a rectangular cross section, and it's actually very circular, and that's because that spire is not entirely cooling. Now, if I turn the cooling up on the, on, the, uh, on the printer, like if I turn that fan speed up, it's actually still blowing enough air uh, that it cools that sensor in the center of the board and shuts down the board again. So the cooling duct uh, is just really not ideal. We're gonna have to redesign that. Okay, well, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna print a better fan shroud. And this one is going to uh, direct the air from both sides of the nozzle. So it's just gonna split the air supply and just sort of vent it around uh, either side. So we'll wait for this to print and then we're gonna print it again. And we'll see that in just a second. Okay, so what we're doing here now is we're reprinting the new fan shroud. And the reason we're doing that is because we want to get a better print. The better cooling will give us a better print of this fan shroud. Print it once with the old crappy frown shroud and then print it again uh, with, the, with the good cooling.
We can clearly see on this print that the, uh, the, the tip right here is not warping. Neither is the tip right there. So everything looks good. Um, if you saw in the time lapse there in the beginning, it's going to look a little rough in through here because I had the fan down there at 33%. At about this height, I turned the fan manually up to 100%. I should probably uh, do that through the slicer. You know, you can change the fan speed based on how high it is off the bed. So I just forgot to click that setting on this print. Anyway, let's uh, let this print and fast forward for just a minute more and then we'll get back to it when we're uh, printing the spire. Okay, so I'm going to slow the feed on this way down now to like 50%, 38%. You can go up to 50. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is I want to give it time on the spire for it to cool down as it's printing. Um, at the fast print speeds that the Delta can handle, uh, it does not give the filament enough time to, uh, to fully harden, even under full fan speed, um, because of the spire, because it's just sort of lingering over the spire. So. Uh, but when you slow it down to 50%, it prints beautifully, as we we're seeing happen right here. And let's talk about the, uh, the difference in print quality between the two. So this is the, um, the part that we printed with the original cooling fan that came with the printer. And we can see that, for the most part, it looks all right. We probably would have been able to get uh, the spire portion right through here. We probably could have had that looking just fine if we had slowed it down the way that we did with the, uh, with the second print. But um, nothing that we could have done would have fixed the, uh, the edge here. So you see how this edge right there is nice and clean up at the top? But this edge down below here is, uh, is not so good. Let's see if we can get a better look at that. Yeah, there you go. See all that ugliness? And that's just, that's just where that, that curling was happening. You just see it doesn't really set down right. Now, uh, I'm being a little nitpicky here. These, uh, these prints have other problems. I have layer adhesion issues with this filament. This is some very cheap ABS filament from China. So uh, I should probably get some nicer filament for nicer parts. But let's take a look at um, this, which is the finished piece. And we can see a nice square profile on the, uh, on the spire, except right there where the joint happens between the, uh, the sort of the main body and the spire. And that's because I just didn't turn down the speed soon enough. I probably should have turned down the speed while I was still printing the main body. And then if we look at these slopes, um, we can see there's really no issue. Now, there is an issue, as I was saying, while it was printing, there's an issue down in here because I didn't turn the fan speed up. I need to auto, I need to have the fan auto turn on to full blast before it gets to this height. So you can see just sort of uglier, uglier 45 degree angle, and then it gets real clean starting right about there. And that's where I turn the fan on to full blast. And it's clean on both sides of that one and on both sides of that one. So that is directly an effect of the, um, of the new uh, fan shroud, which directs the air from both sides. So we're in business and we're gonna install this bracket now with the BL Touch. Before we do that though, let's take a look at the new fan shroud. So there's the bottom side, there's the, uh, the top, and you can see on the left side there is a nice cutout. And that cutout is to accommodate the, uh, the BL Touch sensor. So here's, here's the BL Touch mounted on its bracket, and that's going to have to go right through that cutout basically. Uh, you'll see that here in a second. Now, uh, before I made this, uh, I didn't want to go through all of the design work to, uh, to make that. So what I did is I downloaded uh, this design from Thingiverse. And you can see I accidentally touched the, uh, the heater block with it. But uh, yeah, this design didn't work very well. It looked kind of nice, but it also um, blocked my view of the print nozzle. So I couldn't see what was going on. So not only does this design perform better, it also gives you a, a good... Uh, view of what's happening. 
This is what the, uh, the fan shroud and the BL Touch bracket look like uh, fully installed on the printer. Uh, also, there's the BL Touch sensor itself. Now, right back in there is the cutout of the, of the uh, fan shroud that allows the, uh, the sensor to be mounted as close in towards the nozzle as possible. So it's possible that you could uh, mount the, the fan shroud uh, at 66 degrees. So this is one view. Let's just get that in focus. This is one possible view. That's another possible view. And some might consider this to be the best view because you can see the, the print nozzle straight on. However, um, I like it in this orientation. Reason being, uh, when I run my mesh bed leveling routine, the algorithm, it, it can collide with my uh, bed mount here. That's just at the extremes, right at the very edge of the, of the bed. So um, in this orientation, we don't get that collision. So yeah, that's the fan shroud, and it works quite well, as you guys just saw. Um, it took me a lot of hours to make that fan shroud. I had to go through probably four different iterations before I got it right. And uh, I'm pretty good at, at my CAD software, so uh, it, was, it was no small thing to get that sort of uh, dynamic surfacing to work. Um, but it works great now, and it's very tough. Uh, so it's a, good, it's a good part cooling fan shroud. Um, if you would like to get your hands on a copy of the STL for everything on the printer, and also the, uh, the bed heater uh, firmware, I will give that to you if you go to my Patreon page and donate $5. Now, I realize that that stings for a lot of you. I get some pushback, but I'm, I'm not getting rich here, you guys, and these videos take a lot of time. I mean, I'm not exaggerating. Uh, I spend 20, sometimes 40 hours making some of these videos because I'm figuring out everything on the printer first, then I have to go back and do it all again to film it, and then I have to edit the filming, and then I have to post on YouTube, which is no small feat. So uh, this is not an easy thing, and I really do need uh, to get compensated for uh, that work. So please, please donate. Give me five bucks. It'll help me. Hey, I got a new baby at home, you know? It helps me support my kid. So uh, yeah, that's it for this video. Um, I will get that firmware working, the auto mesh bed leveling working somehow. So uh, tune in for that. Um, I'll get it done as soon as I can. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time.